Doctor. 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 So last week I talked about giving you a quiz, right? Am I right? Um, on best, uh, best, ha- the most efficient section. Uh, um, uh, uh, the most, uh, the best section, lah, basically, yeah. Um, I was thinking about it. Um, most probably I'll give it to you tomorrow, at the end of the class, because today I actually have a. Um, on your attendance link there, right? There's a sort of like sh- short quiz, right? Uh, for you to answer. There's only one question, right? Just for to recap out what we have learned, uh, during our chapter one and chapter two, eh? Um, because we have actually finished our chapter, uh, both of the chapters, eh? And today we are going to start with chapter three, and. Regarding regarding your test one, um, I'm the coordinator of hydraulics actually has not um. We we have already discussed. It's just that the date is not uh fixed yet for your test one. But uh, most probably you you would expect your test one, uh, which will be conducted online, eh. Um, within two to three weeks away lah, right? Uh, you you guys are clear, right? Uh, with what I'm saying right now. Yes, clear. Okay, that's good. Alright then. Um, now um, yeah, just be ready, right? Um, chap test one would normally covers chapter 1, 2 and part of chapter 3 but I, I'm not sure, so sure um, I don't think so uh, it will cover chapter 3 um, the whole chapter 3 lah basically it's just part of it um, and it's not difficult I guess you have to do more uh, to do exercises um, on chapter 1 and 2 um, definitely you you are going to score your test one lah. Um, and then let's uh, look at what is in store for us in chapter 3 eh? um, you guys are ready right for today's lesson yes ok that's great um, let's look at our notes for chapter 3 Okay, um, now, chapter 3 is on specific energy and control section. Um, basically, what is specific energy and control section? Uh, um, well, specific energy is actually energy which is measured from the bottom of a channel. Um, let, we are going to look at the equation later uh, in the slides after this. Um, and what is control section? Now, basically, uh, typically, at control section is where critical flow occurs. And therefore, well, once we know the critical depth or critical flow characteristics, we actually can um, analyze for what is happening upstream and downstream uh, of control section. So that's why it's very important to know uh, the characteristics of control section. And then, um, now, chapter 3 is about uh, non-uniform flow eh? uh, we have learned uniform flow in chapter 2 chapter 1 basically is general about open channel eh? um, so in chapter 2 alright we have learned we have looked at uh, uniform flow eh? we have analyzed what is uh, um, you know how we solve how we actually um, estimate for you know the depth, um, the characteristics of channel uh, during uh, uniform flow, eh? um, and then the parameters that we have actually learned are you know why not, which is the depth of uniform flow, 
uh, y subscript e which is the depth of flow in best section eh, or most efficient or effective channel eh. uh, so that's why you have the subscript e there so today we are going to look at chapter 3 and I'm going to introduce another parameter of uh, flow, depth of flow which is the depth of critical flow with subscript C so that represents uh, you know the depth during uh, critical flow um, and subsequently in chapter 4 right, we are going to look at gradually varied flow and rapidly varied flow uh, so this is what we are going to learn in chapter 3 eh? we are going to look at specific energy uh, we are going to analyze flow over broad coasted wheel, flow through width constructed. Uh, we are going to look at all this. Eh? Uh, I, I know that most probably you are not sure what uh, you know, broad crested wheel is about, width constructor is about. Uh, well, width constructor is basically imagine a channel um, flowing suddenly, uh, flowing under a bridge, suddenly the width of the channel is reduced. Uh, due to the abutment of the channel, uh, the bridge. So basically, the width, uh, that is the width. Uh, that means the bridge itself constrict the width of the channel or river. So that's why it's known as width constrictor. So it's actually ch it changes the depth of flow upstream and downstream. All right. There are three conditions uh, we are going to analyze eh, in the in this chapter. Um, well, the title itself, uh, concept of specific energy. Uh, basically, it's chapter three. Eh? It's supposed to be three point one, but uh, basically we start off with one point one lah. All right. Um, what is specific energy? Um, I know that in your fluid mechanics, we have learned about Bernoulli's theorem, where you have the total energy equals to, you know, the um, head of pressure, head of uh, velocity, and head of uh, potential. All right. Uh, in open channel, since it is measured from channel's bottom and it's not measured from uh, datum, uh, so we didn't take account into take the z into account. So that's why we only have two uh, parameters there. The total energy is equal to the depth of flow plus, right, uh, the head of uh, the velocity, all right, the energy due to the velocity, eh. Uh, which is y plus v squared over 2g alright uh, this is the specific energy so basically uh, specific energy the definition would be the energy of flow measured from the channel's bottom alright from the bottom of the channel lah, basically uh, if there is no loss of energy uh, which I indicated in the diagram as hf right if there is no loss of energy that means your uh, total energy be from one point to another will remain the same. Alright, uh, we are going to learn about loss of energy uh, or energy dissipation in chapter four, eh? uh, where uh, there would be changes uh, due to uh, or loss of energy due to hydraulic jam. Um, now, um, let's look at the diagram. Eh? Um, below of the slide okay on your left is the diagram which shows the changes of your depth depth of flow uh, you know at a particular time it could be y2 or at uh, you know certain time it could be critical depth or critical flow where the depth is equal to yc and at any time y could be y1 now y1 if you look at the depth of flow right y1 is greater than yc so it's a subcritical flow. Eh? Y2 is less than YC. It's a supercritical flow. You know that when Y is less than YC, your velocity is higher. Eh? Because your you know your A is smaller, right? So your basically your velocity is higher. So higher than which velocity? Higher than your critical velocity. So it's supercritical. Alright? When your depth of flow is higher then your critical depth of flow that means your, your velocity is lower than your uh, critical flow so it is in subcritical state okay um, now the diagram on your right okay 
is it shows a graph. Um, on your y axis is depth of flow, eh? and on your x axis is the energy, specific energy. Okay, now look at the uh, representative, um, you know, the corresponding. Uh, you have on your right, you know, it shows a different depth, right? Uh, and on your um, the graph, it shows that, you know, at the point where critical depth or YC occurs, right? Uh, the graph actually shows the specific energy is at its minimum value, which is represented by the E min. Eh? And then uh, correspondingly, you have, you know, the uh, depth of flow when it's supercritical, all right, and subcritical. Now, look at the graph, right, okay? Uh, you have this thick blue line right there, right, okay? Now, and then you also have this dash red line, where this dash red line is E equals to Y. That means if you draw the graph, where when y, the scale of e and y are the same right okay you can plot e and y exactly 45 degree uh, with the condition the scale of e and y is the same so you get 45 lah, basically eh? all right but if you plot you know the scale e and y is different on different scale right you won't get 45 but you can still draw a line e equals to y okay but it could be you know at different angle now what I'm going to say here is the blue line, which is uh, actually the how did you get the blue line is from that equation, which is a specific energy equation that is E equals to Y plus Q squared over 2G A squared or E equals to Y plus V squared over 2G. Right, then you get this blue line here. Uh, this blue line here is asymptote to the line E equals to Y. It won't intersect, it won't go beyond E equals to Y. Okay, that's the characteristics of this graph. Eh? Okay, now, on this graph, okay, the blue line, okay, uh, separate, de uh, delineated by this depth of critical flow, right? Below is a depth of, it's actually in, all the depths are in supercritical state. The depths above critical depth is the depths in subcritical state. Okay, um, because the velocity is uh, lower uh, and for supercritical, the velocity is greater. Alright, basically. Alright, um, you, you can see, right, the velocity is actually shown... Um, I, I actually have, you know, the velocity drawn out um, that I show the range between the dash line connecting uh, towards the blue line there. That is the range of your velocity. You know, it's greater with smaller depth, you have greater velocity. So, uh, that, that shows, you know, all these are in supercritical flow and above your critical flow is subcritical flow. I know that it's hard for you to understand, just, you know, you, you, you know, I purposely draw this out for you to try and look at it and try to understand it yourself, right? Mm. Now, at any point after the crit E min, if you look at the uh, x axis, eh, you have E min, you have E1 equals to E2. At an, after E min, E min has only one point uh, or one depth, alright? For a, a particular specific energy, you only have one, one depth, which is YC. But for the other specific energy, you have two depths. One is the depth in supercritical flow and the other is the depth in subcritical flow. That means if you are solving this equation, uh, E equals to Y plus Q squared over 2G A squared, or... Um, or oh, this equation here. Oh, just a second, eh? I'm going to copy the other equation. This one. Okay. Or oh, you have this equation here, right? Alright. Um, you actually, either one, you can actually solve uh, this expression.
question, this specific energy expression and get two uh, answers where one is the depth for, when you solve for depth of flow, right? One is the depth for critical flow and the other is the depth for um, subcritical flow. Except when E equals to E mean, you only have one depth, which is the minimum depth of flow. Alright? Uh, sorry, it's a critical depth of flow. Um, so far, do you have any question before I proceed? Um, hi, hi, class. No, no question. No, okay. Um, you know what? To make things clearer, like, clearer, let me plot the graph E to Y. Now, let's, let's you know, let's call this graph that I plot uh, Y against E is E dash Y graph, all right? Um, let's look at one, uh, let's look at my Excel, uh, um, my Excel graph here. Yeah. You are able to look at my Excel, right? Are you now? Yes, Doctor. Okay, great. Uh, okay, now. Yes. Yes, eh? Okay, let's see. Um, now, let's say I wanted to plot, so I have here the graph of uh, E, Y. Alright? So, what, um, now E is a meter, eh? It's actually the head of energy, eh? So, um, I mean, you cannot see uh, because it's raining over there, right? <laughs> okay. Um, it's okay. What I'm going to do, most probably I'm going to share this recording on YouTube so you can uh, you can look at all our lessons again, right? From day one. Um, I, I tried, but the, actually the size of our video is quite huge. So, but anyhow, I'll try to upload everything in, on my channels, uh, YouTube channels. Okay. Um, now, um, if you look at this graph, right, what I'm going to uh, plot is, okay, um, let's just take one channel, which is the rectangular. Uh, in this chapter, we are going to learn all uh, se all sections, uh, uh, that means rectangular, trapezoidal, but, um, well, I, I here, here's the thing, chapter 3, chapter 4, um, I guess we are going to analyze using simple or basic shapes. Chapter 2 would involve a uh, compound channel, right? Where you have, you know, um, a combination of, you know, trapezoidal, triangular uh, shapes, right? Uh, but since uh, we are doing analyzing, right, we keep it simple for chapter 3 and 4. So that's why I, uh, I mentioned to you a few times already that um, hydraulics is not difficult, huh? Um, as long as you get um, the concept right, then it's okay. Now, let's assume, uh, let's use one example, which is the rectangular channel. Okay, you have a rectangular section with that 0 0.5 meter, alright? And then, of course, the area of flow would be uh, 0 0.5 times the width. The width is 2 meter here, okay? Now, so I have my A, uh, B times Y. Now, my specific energy would be Y plus, okay, I have my Q, uh, the red color, right, Q there, uh, squared over 2 over G, which is 9.81, alright, my uh, gravity, gravitational acceleration, 9.81, and then I have my C, uh, uh, sorry, my A squared, alright, so my formula is Y plus Q squared over 2g a squared all right so i have my special energy which is this expression here okay now um but by the way uh, are you able to see my cursor pointing all this e equation uh, yes doctor ah, that's great okay now uh let's say let's let's look at one depth 0 0.5 so i have one point Oh, you couldn't see because it's actually 20. My, on my graph, right, my maximum value for my x-axis is only up to 10. So it's actually beyond that. But it's fine. Let's say the depth of flow increases. 
to uh to one meter. Alright, at the interval of zero point five meter lah. Alright, so I have another point. So this is my e. Eh? I calculated using that specific energy. It gives me e equals to six point one, approximately six point one meter. Alright, so I said, let me, you know, uh, plot another one which is one point five at uh, incremental another point five. So now my depth is one point five. So it gives me another specific energy. Alright, so let's say I plotted at incremental of 0.5 meter. So this is what I get. Huh? I actually, if you look at this graph, right, actually it will reach a point where uh, the specific energy would be minimum. Actually, that is the point when specific energy is minimum, you will get your depth of critical flow. It's around 2 point something, lah, all right? We can read it somewhere here, alright? Okay, we can get like around, you know, 2, I guess. Okay, now, um, so I, if I were to plot my graph, right, okay? Um, uh, I, I, if I want to show my graph using just a line graph, right? So you'll get this. I'm just connecting all the points, eh? at different depth, you'll have different specific energy. So what I'm trying to say here is, you know, at two different depths, which is one depth at supercritical flow and the other depth at subcritical flow, you can actually get the same specific energy. Because actually, if I were to solve this expression here, right, okay, I would get, if I have E, I have constant Q, I have, um, of course, G is constant, uh, alright, and A is actually I have constant B right so I'm solving Y and Y uh, to get Y right I actually have two values of Y where one value would give me um, a Y small, smaller than critical depth the other Y will be higher than my critical critical depth which is the subcritical depth lah. all right so um, what I'm trying to say is, except for um, E mean, alright, the other E will give you two depths, alright, okay. So, that's why I want you to learn um, how to use your calculator to solve try and error. Because actually, if you press solve once, you'll get one value of Y. And if you press another solve, you'll get another value of Y, alright, okay. So, because um, in this chapter, right, we are actually trying to solve this expression. It, we, I could write this in terms of, you know, um, for rectangular, I could write this expression in terms of uh, lowercase q squared over 2g, uh, lower, uh, sorry, y squared. Alright, so I can solve my y lah. Alright, um, and using try and error. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to say. So it's similar eh, with this graph here. Okay, let's... Let's look at our PowerPoint slides again. Oh, I think it's better if I use this. Uh, it's easier. So, okay, no. Alright. Um, okay. Uh, because I can actually point using my cursor if I'm using, I, if I didn't use the uh, PowerPoint slide. Okay, now. Uh, this is the graph that I get actually from my Excel, right? Okay, uh, I have just show you using the Excel how did I get all this graph, alright? With different depths, right? I get uh, specific energy, so I kind of plotted them out, alright? At different depths, so I get uh, one uh, the line of specific energy eh, for a particular uh, channel section with a particular uh, discharge. Alright. Now, um, what is alternate depths? Huh? Um, you know, when I mentioned to you, right, that this graph, right, for any specific energy, you would have two depths. Alright, one specific energy would give you two depths, one depth in supercritical, uh, condition and the other depth is in subcritical sub, sub condition. Those depths are known as alternate depths. 
that means having the same uh, specific energy you have two depths subcritical and supercritical depths all right so this these are known as alternate depths so if you want if i ask you how would you define alternate depths right um, you would say the depths right the subcritical and supercritical depths obtained all right um, at a particular or uh, having the same specific energy lah basically um, however which we would learn eh, hydra ejam we will learn in chapter 4 eh, um, you would actually get y1 and y2 too but they are not they, since in hydra ejam there will be energy loss so the energy would not be the same then it is known as conjugate your sequence depths alright uh, so in this chapter we are going to look at alternate depths first eh? um, we are going to look at conjugate or sequence depths in chapter 4 uh, now critical occurs uh, of course critical flow occurs when specific energy is minimum eh? alright. Um, now again eh, if your answer I it doesn't matter if you are looking for why not or why C or you know why E is negative it's not possible because we are looking at depths above the channel's bottom. Alright. Um, so at channel's bottom, if there is no depth, right, your y is zero. Alright. Um, it could not be, you know, if your answer you get negative, there's something wrong. Uh, even in chapter four later, we would learn about, you know, um, gradually varied flow where, where we are going to analyze. Uh, most uh, sometimes you'll get depths negative but it's impossible so what you could do is uh, you just uh, put modulus right modulus sign so it's actually positive lah all right so that would not go lower than zero eh? okay now this is the specific energy expression that i've shown earlier eh? uh, so um, let's prove you know if this specific energy uh, is at is minimum all right where we can set de dy equals to zero eh so e is minimum right so if i differentiate e with respect of y of course now a is not constant eh? because when y changes your flow depth changes as well eh? in this case so i differentiate if you look at this expression right i actually differentiate a right so i have da dy lah all right so i have da dy there and then um, now um, setting de dy equals to zero right okay so what i'll get is you know these expressions become zero all right so i rearrange everything okay uh, I, it doctor that, yes what? we can't see the slide oh you cannot see the slide oh sorry yeah oh, okay. How about now? How about now? Yes, yes, already oh, got. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've been, I think I've been explaining quite a while, right? Okay, <laughs> thanks a lot. Huh? Um, next time, <laughs> you know, just uh, point it out earlier. <laughs> Pity you all. Okay, now, uh, what I'm trying, uh, let me repeat. Huh? All right, okay. Uh, this is the expression of specific energy I told you earlier, right? So, um, now, I actually differentiate my de dy, right? Uh, because I, I, I said I want to get, you know, uh, I want to show uh, the critical depth occurs when e is minimum, alright? So, I differentiate e with respect of y. So, you know, when y changes, your depth of flow changes, right? Except in the case of where we differentiate this uh, with, uh, to get best section that is different eh? best section is different so that in that case is uniform flow so the depth doesn't change all right but in this case it's not uniform eh? so the depth changes along the channel okay so we are looking at um, you know de dy because we, we said we want to prove you know why is critical flow when e is minimum right so set uh, differentiating e with respect of y 
what we'll get is you know setting d e dy equals to zero we have to this expression uh, becomes zero right so rearranging everything so actually from this expression you also have one expression which gives you q squared over g equals to a c cubic power over t c later i'll show it to you eh, the expression you can get your y c um, um you know sometimes right um um you would i would ask you uh, to find critical depth you can actually use this expression here q squared over g equals to a c uh, cubic power over tc you can uh, get your yc there all right so um and then uh, we know that q over a is actually v right so substituting and then d is also equals to a over t so substitute d and v uh, you you can actually rewrite this in terms of d v equals to square root gd and we in chapter one we have learned that you know uh, fruit number uh, is the ratio of the gravitational is the ratio of initial force to gravitational force right so it shows that fruit equals to one lah when e is minimum right which is when critical flow occurs right okay now I could rewrite this expression here all right in terms of here but this only applies in chapter 2 uh, we have already learned about you know uh, discharge per unit width right which i i mentioned that it only applies for rectangular section right so again for rectangular section i can actually replace my uh, discharge per unit width right but my a becomes y lah because uh, q is actually uh, discharge per unit width is uh, you know uppercase q divided my, is my flow rate divided by b right the same thing here i divide um, my uh, new denominator and numerator with b so i have uh, this expression here right okay um, so um, again eh, uh, this graph here i can actually rearrange this to become uh, q equals to square root uh, 2gy squared e minus y lah. Alright, again, if I plot this graph out, okay, uh, I, I also have this, alright, it's, it, it's just that at different depth, alright, you can actually have points there and it plotted, uh, it becomes this uh, graph here, alright. Uh, it will show, right, at critical depth or critical flow, your Q becomes Q max, alright, the maximum flow, alright. And two uh, and actually, uh, and at a particular discharge, right, you also have a uh, two depths. Lah. One is in supercritical state, and the other one is in subcritical state. Right. Um. Now, sometimes, right, you may have problem. You know, uh, trying to imagine, um, or you know, trying to get a feel. Uh, whether the bottom part is supercritical or subcritical, if you if you cannot imagine it, right? Let's imagine you have um, a slope, water coming down from a slope. If the slope is very steep, alright. Kalau lah cerun tu kan sangat curam kan? Kalau Q yang sama, let's say kita kata uh, kadar alir aliran sama, alright? Oh, uh, update. Uh, Abdul eh, there's a guy Abdul Do you understand Malay or not? Um, Abdul Aziz Abdul Aziz Is Abdul Aziz there? Yes doctor Ah, Do you understand Bahasa? Uh, no uh, oh, Okay, I'm... <laughs> English, <laughs> yeah. I was it's trying to me. help my our friends right I'll, I'll okay. just Give me 5 minutes to explain it Alright then okay, I'll okay, explain okay, in English. No problem. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. great. Alright. Um, now, uh, imagine kan kalau lah kadar alir yang sama mengalir atas satu cerun. Ada dua cerun. Satu cerun yang curam, satu cerun yang landai. Kalau cerun tu curam, air ukur dalam airnya menipis tau dan halajunya sangat tinggi. Kalau lah cerun tu landai, Ukur dalam alirannya lebih tebal atau ataupun lebih tinggi dan uh, halajunya lebih uh, agak lambat. So, you boleh imagine that, kan? Ka, uh, 
aliran supercritical ni um, akan memberi ukur dalam yang lebih uh, kecil. Alright, jadi halaju dia tinggilah. Uh, kalau lah cerun dia landai, okay, ukur dalam aliran dia lebih tinggi tapi halaju dia lebih rendah lah. Uh, jadi, I, I hope kalau you tengok graf ni, you nampak kata ukur dalam alirannya yang tinggi daripada aliran kritikal ni, dia lebih, dia subcritical. Maknanya halaju dia kurang. Eh, berbanding dengan kalau ukur dalam aliran ni kurang daripada ukur dalam aliran kritikal, um, dia ialah super critical eh. Um, now, update, what I was explaining is, alright, um, sometimes is for, maybe you get a problem of, you know, trying to understand what is, uh, or which part of the graph is supercritical state or subcritical state. Eh? So, I asked uh, our friends um, to imagine for a constant discharge, alright, imagine flow coming down from a slope. Um, there are two slopes, one very steep and the other one is mild slope, alright? So, um, you know, for a steep slope, the flow coming down very fast, right? Because it's steep. And you could expect that the depth of flow is thin. That means the depth of uh, slope, uh, flow is very small. Lah. That's why you get the, the bottom part. That means if the depth is smaller than critical depth, Alright, the velocity is very high, so it's super critical. And when it's on a mild slope, right, you know, having the same Q, right, of course the depth of flow is greater than, because you know that you, you won't expect the velocity to be higher than, you know, the velocity on a mild, uh, steeper slope, right? So, the velocity is smaller, alright, the depth is greater than on the steeper slope, alright? So, that is the above uh, the subcritical part where you have the depth of flow greater than your critical depth of flow uh, and the velocity is actually smaller than the critical uh, um, velocity right so I hope you can you know understand I'm, I'm trying to give you hint, some hints eh, to understand between critical flow and um, yeah, subcritical yeah, yeah. Thank you, and supercritical right alright okay let's look at um, okay um, okay, uh, on our next slide, right? Bear with me, eh? Um, I, I guess we only have another 20 minutes to go, eh? Alright, uh, I'll try to make it just for one hour, I guess. Okay, now, so this table here kind of sum up, give you a summary, alright, of uh, what is the characteristics between critical, subcritical, and supercritical flow. Uh, in chapter 1, we have already learned, you know, uh, fruit number equals to 1 is critical flow, less than 1 is subcritical, greater than 1 is supercritical, alright? Uh, if the depth of flow is greater than YC, is subcritical. Uh, if depth of flow is less than supercritical, uh, depth, super, uh, depth of flow is supercritical flow, eh? Alright. Okay. Um, now, um, try this at home, alright? Um, basically, these activities ask you to calculate specific energy if the uh, depth of flow is given. Uh, basically, you just use this equation here. E equals to Y plus Q squared over 2GA squared. Um, actually, you have to try this. I know when you look at all these exercises uh, that I have given you with the answers, right? Oh, you when you look at it, oh, it's so simple. But, sometimes we tend to make mistakes when we write the equation or when we, you know, use calculator to calculate all this. Because if we are not used to writing all this expression, right, when in your test or your exam, you might miss out a square or whatever. So, when you try many times, you know, writing the same thing, you go, you know, do exercises over and over again. Uh, you are so used, you know when certain equation is wrong, okay? Uh, that's the trick to get to score, right? Okay, now, um, exercise 1 is about uh, the same thing, eh? Calculate specific energy for a 1.23 
meter cube, cube over second per meter. Now this Q here is the discharge per unit. Nah, uh, discharge per unit flow. Alright, because this it, the unit if you look at it is over meter, nah, meter width. In a one point six meter wide rectangular channel, it's not very wide. Eh, <laughs> it's only is is given you as width. Eh, it's only uh, giving you a width, not very wide width. Eh. Alright, with depth of 0 0.65. What is the alternate depth for the flow? Alright, and then the next question is find the state of flow. That means you have to determine whether it's subcritical or supercritical or critical eh, for each depth. Uh, basically, the question gives you one specific energy. You need to find the depth of flow. Okay. So what you are going to do is so if you look at this uh, discharge, you can actually readily use. Uh, of course, the hint is here also rectangular channel. So you can simplify this problem as a rectangular channel already. Eh? Okay. So um, oh, I actually give you answer. You should try to do it. Wait, I'll check whether I have solution here. Uh, not really. Okay. Now, um. What you have to do is okay. I you have this equation here. All right. Okay. I want you to try this uh, using your calculator. Eh? Okay. Substitute the specific energy. Substitute a discharge per unit with okay. Of course, g you are using. Uh, you are going to use nine point eight one. Eh? Uh, meter over a second squared. All right. And then find y. Try to get, alright, you should get two values of y, alright. One should be 0 0.4476, the other one 0 0.65, alright. Of course, alright, uh, rule of the thumb, you know that higher depth of flow should be in subcritical, lower depth of flow should be in supercritical. Super when you check, when you justify for flow, of course, you can actually use you know fruit number to find uh the fruit fruit number lah to um you know to check whether it's greater or less than one. Now, if you don't believe me, let's say, all right, if um when you are trying to solve this uh, equation here, right? Okay, when you are trying to solve this equation, you only got one answer. If you don't believe me, what you have you can do is substitute both answer. In this expression, you definitely will get the same E. Uh, sorry, which is uh, 0 0.65. Eh? Uh, okay. Uh, zero, uh, sorry, sorry. Calculate specific energy for... Um, oh, okay. Uh, okay, okay. I think I this is straight, quite straightforward, lah, basically. Okay. So, it's actually... Okay, I think this is, I I think I kind of read the question wrongly. Actually, you are asked to find specific energy. That means one y is already given to you. That means you can get the e. Once you get an e, you have to solve this equation again, alright, to get your another e, uh, another y. But I don't know. Okay, here's the thing, eh. <laughs> You never know whether the next y, the one that the y that you need to find is greater or less than your y one. Uh, sometimes you know what you can do is you can find what is your y c first. Alright, once you get your y c, you know that the other y should be in another state lah. Basically, if your y one is greater than y c, you know that the other answer should be less than y c. Okay, that's the tips. Okay, this is simple lah. All right, try to solve this. But of course, in order to get y three, you have to do try and error also lah for this equation, right? Okay. Um, I'll I'll show you the steps. All right. Um, tomorrow. Okay. All the the solution eh? Tomorrow and then um try this as well because this is quite straightforward eh? Um and then um. I think today I'm going to go up just another few slides. Eh? Okay.
okay um, another 15 14 minutes more okay now let's look at uh, calculation of critical depth eh? it's actually similar to uh, the you know the questions all right uh, before except that the question before actually deter ask you to find um, the alternate depths eh? all the alternate steps uh, now is the calculation of critical depths eh? now um, the critical depths is similar all right the steps are similar to get the depth of uniform flow in chapter 2 you can do try and error or you can get it through graphic or graph all right um, now the critical depth from try and error okay this is what this is the equation that we have looked at uh, it when we um, set um, de over dy equals to zero eh? so we get this expression here all right so um, you have q squared over tc over g a cubic power equals to one now you know that i'm rewriting this expression in terms of this okay now it's similar to your section factor in chapter two you know you you have your manning and chasey where you rearrange all the functions of depth on your left all right and the known functions uh, on your uh, right right and then look at this expression here on your left you have a it's actually a function of depth your t the top width all right it's also a function of your depth all right so you have a cubic power over t all right now subscript c is uh, for critical depth eh? because this expression here we get it when we set de over dy equals to zero it's already critical flow all right and it's equal to one eh? it's already critical flow that's why you have uh the subscript c there all right to represent that the depth is actually for uh it's critical depth eh? all right so you have this expression now you can use this equation to solve for depth of critical flow for all section it doesn't matter whether trapezoidal section rectangular section uh, triangular section circular section whatever eh? okay now however we can simplify this equation for rectangular channel okay but if you do for rectangular channel if you don't want to use this simplified equation is fine too you can use this as well all right but can you use this expression for other section no only for rectangular all right it says op applies only for rectangular section now how did we get to this expression here you see for rectangular channel right the top width of the flow eh, is equal to b because rectangular right, b is equal to t lah basically flow area is a equals to b y so substitute this all right into this expression here okay i have b y cubic power so i have b cubic power y cubic power divided by b equals to q squared over g you see b here right all right i cancel 1b i have b squared i'm i bring it to my to on towards uh, on my uh, right so I have uh, y cubic power equals to q squared over b squared over g. Now q divided by b is a discharge over unit width. So I have q squared there. Alright. So y I have um, one uh, uh, sorry cubic root all right, of q squared over g. So this is the expression that I have simplified to get my critical depth of flow for rectangular channel. Okay, uh, so I want you to you know to be clear about all this expression. Eh? So don't simply use the expression for any shapes. Eh? It only applies for rectangular channel. Uh, if you want to find you know critical depth for trapezoidal, triangular, or even rectangular, you can use this expression. Okay. So I hope you so far you can you you can understand eh, so far. Alright. Now critical depth occurs when Q maximum. We have look at the graph right just now. 
so if I differentiate q with respect to y, right? Okay, it will give me this this expression here, here, uh, and then. But again, uh, uh, I'm using discharge per unit width, uh, so this expression here only applies for rectangle channel. So I rearrange this expression. I have my e min equals to three over two or one point five y c. So for a rectangle channel. If I know my critical depth of flow, if I know my YC, I can get my E min already because E min is just 1.5 times YC. Alright? Uh, this is only for rectangular channel. But, if you ask me, okay, or if I ask you, let, let, let me ask you one question. How am I going to get E min for other sections, eh? Like tr uh, trapezoidal, triangular, circular. Do you have any idea to get my E min? Anyone? Somebody suddenly left. <laughs> uh, let me ask. Um, uh, Is is one there? Is one? Mama is one. Is one? Are you there? <laughs> Are you having problem with your mic? Okay, uh, let me ask. Oh, my mic not working. Okay, how about Pong Lim Seng? Is Pong Lim Seng there? Don't tell me. Yes, Everyone's mic is not working. Okay, <laughs> Lim Seng, uh, can, can you answer my question? Uh, no. Why no? <laughs> I don't understand. You don't understand? No. Okay, I repeat my question. Eh? This equation here only applies for rectangular channel, right? What if I want to find E min for other section, like trapezoidal? How do I find my E min for other section? Another five minutes more, alright, before I end my class. No, 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 no. Is one, no, no, no. There will be even for all sections, eh? Alright. Here's the thing. <laughs> Alright. Are you guys sleeping? I hope no, eh? Okay, now, here's the thing, eh? You see, eh? Uh, okay. You see, I can get YC, right, from this expression. Let, let's say we are talking about a trapezoidal section, eh? I can get my YC from this expression. Once I get my YC, can I use this uh, equation to get my E min? Because my Y now is already YC. So my E of course E min, right? Do you agree? Yes. Ah, thank you, Sarah. Are you clear, Sarah? Yes, yes. Okay. Now, another question for... Izati, Nazira. No, Izati, Nazira. Okay. Yes. Izati, can I use this equation to get my E min for rectangular channel? Yes. Yes. Alright, you are right. Yes, this expression can be applied for all shapes. Alright. Only those that we have simplified, right? Only applies uh, if, ha you know, it involves, um, you know, discharge per unit width is only simplified for rectangular channel. Eh? Okay, now, um, let's see what else. Okay. Uh, now, uh, I wanted to end this on this slide. The, because it has a lot of exercises, you can try to do it. You actually, your 
class is actually you have another one hour right you can try all these exercises um, and you can okay another thing tomorrow is your submission day for your assignment too all right so you can once you submitted your assignment two, you can try your hand with your assignment three already oh uh, i will upload assignment three after this okay um and then uh, i'm going this is the final slide eh, i'm going to talk about for today all right so um i'm go i'll be uploading all the solution lah, all right uh, by end of the day or tomorrow lah, easier so you can try yourself first all right now uh what is critical slope okay critical slope of course again eh, you have critical slope mild slope steep slope just now i use example right for steep slope uh steep when you look at steep slope right of course it's actually um you know for uh you know higher velocity flow right uh which is actually um s not greater than se uh for mild slope actually your s is less than SC because it's milder than your critical slope lah basically right so now how do you calculate your SC it's very simple actually you only use you know if you look at this expression here right uh, this square root of GA to the cubic power over TC is actually I got it from this expression here. I rewrite this expression. I wrote it in terms of Q. Becomes this. And I also know that Q is equal to 1 over N. I'm using Manning here. Because I say I want to equate S0 equals to SE. To get my SE. Alright. So S0, I get it from my Manning. Alright. SE is uh, actually... Uh, uh, I equate and uh, now I'm equating S not becomes S C already. Eh? So how so that's why my Q is uh, square root of G, which is my, during critical flow, eh? Square root of G A cubic power over T C. Rewriting this, okay. Of course, I only consider uh, these two expression, eh? I didn't consider the Q there. Eh? Alright. Um. That means I rewriting this. Alright. To find my S C. Uh, you should be able to show your SC rearranging everything eh? your SC equals to n squared over g is divided by tr to the power 4 over 3 okay so you have a lot of exercises here all right so try to do it i'll give you the answer tomorrow eh? so you have at least you have a hand trying all this out eh? then uh, actually you can try already so tomorrow we are going to look at such 1.4 control section already eh? um, it gets actually uh, more interesting afterwards right? if you look at all this very simple eh? so don't worry about that all right okay so um, i'm going to end my class today remember remember there's a quiz short quiz one question quiz on your attendance link eh? try to answer it eh? because i'm going to take uh, the group the marks for it Okay, and put in your quiz uh, marks. Okay, um, all right, that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Do you have any questions so far? No, doctor. No, doctor. No? All right, then. No. If you, you don't have any questions, I'll see you tomorrow then. All right, take care. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, Dr.